Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jin Hase. <coughs> uh, I'm work at uh, EFSAS Technologies, Inc. And uh, we are developing emergency architecture, which is called composable disaggregate infrastructure. Today, uh, we introduce dynamic staging of GPUs for content apps with composable disaggregate infrastructure for AI era. Recently, Generative AI has become very popular. The use of AI workloads is also increasing in Kubernetes environment. So we will introduce the importance of composable disaggregate infrastructure in AI era and how it works with Kubernetes. Generative AI opens the age of AI. As a result, enormous computational resources are required they need lots of power to operate. On the other hand, realizing sustainable world is an urgent issue for us. We are always expected to reduce power consumption. That means we need to satisfy high performance and power saving simultaneously. To cope with these conflicting requirements, it's important to use expensive GPUs as efficiently as possible. And next, there are mainly three methods for use of GPUs efficiently. We aim to realize that third method to achieve both high performance and power saving. I explain each method. The first one is splitting the GPU by several ways and allowing multiple processes to use it so that GPU can be used efficiently. However, it cannot provide more performance than the number of GPUs attached to the server. The second method is to steer nodes with GPUs horizontally. This method allows us to increase or decrease the number of GPUs, which can provide better performance than the first method. However, adding nodes takes time, so there is possibility to cause temporary lack of performance. And if user only wants a GPU, consuming unnecessary power of nodes. Ah, sorry. The third method is to vertically scale the number of GPUs in the server. This method can provide as many GPUs as user needs quickly, depending on user's workload. This meets both high performance and power saving. So we are aiming to realize the third method, vertical device scaling. As an infrastructure for vertical scaling of devices, composable disaggregated infrastructure is emerged. We call this infrastructure CDI. And in a tra traditional server uh, in the uh, left diagram, hardware resources such as GP CPUs, memory, and GPUs reside within the server. And CDI uh, decomposes these hardware resources and makes them available as a resource pool. So we can combine these resources by software definition so that we can create custom-made servers. We call it composed bare metal. This infrastructure allows us to dynamically increase or decrease the number of GPUs. And uh, this slide shows Celia software stack. Celia system is composed of resource pool and Celia manager software. In resource pool, all components are connected to PCIe or CXL switches. Celia manager controls the switches so as to create composed bare metals by software definition. It has CDI API and operator, or Kubernetes may call the API. Once composed parameters are created, user can install any operating system or container infrastructure. And uh, we would like to realize automatically attaching or detaching GPS to Kubernetes nodes based on load. There are two key features. One is dynamic device clearing, we call it DDS. 
This feature determines whether to increase or decrease node or GPU, depending on load. So this feature is responsible for determining optimal resource allocation. And uh, second one is CEDA operator. This feature accesses CEDA manager and attach or detach GPUs as did this uh, decision. This feature is responsible for actually performing the GPU attach or detach. So uh, I will explain the simple processing flow in this uh, diagram. The user first creates a port, and if cluster runs out of resources, such as GPUs, in this case, Kubernetes scheduler will not be able to deploy the port. Such port is uh, called unschedulable port. To be able to deploy this port, DDS determines whether to add additional GPU or just add node. If DDS determines to add the only GPU, the operator requests the manager to add a GPU. And after the manager adds the GPU to the node, Kubernetes scheduler can schedule the port. When Kubernetes scheduler deploys a port, features for using the GPU from the port, such as DRA, uh, dynamic resource allocation feature, and uh, device plugin works. Next, I explain basic operation flow. First, uh, it's important to note that DDS leverages a feature called cluster autoscaler. Cluster autoscaler is a Kubernetes feature that allows nodes to scale horizontally depending on load. This feature is called CA. And uh, DDS hooks up node, increase or decrease processing of CA, and DDS then determines whether to increase or decrease only GPUs or nodes. This means that uh, if she tries to add a node itself, if DDS determines that adding the GPU is optimal, only GPU will be added. And uh, upper figure show current CA processing of horizontal node scaling. If we use uh, CDA as a uh, inf infrastructure, and uh, when C determines to add or remove nodes, she then manager creates or deletes composed bare metal. Below figure show vertical device clearing by DDS. DDS hooks up node increase or decrease processing of CA, and if DDS determines node should be added, she then manager creates composed bare metal. On the other hand, if DDS determines GPU should be added. In this case, DDS requests the operator to add GPU. Yeah, this is a basic compilation flow. Let's take a look at the challenges of achieving vertical scaling of the device. Since DDS leverages CA feature, DDS needs a mechanism to scale the device while keeping CA concept. However, uh, when DDS scale devices, CA's processing is affected. Specifically, uh, CA groups nodes that have the same spec. In CA, this is called node group. And uh, she adds or removes nodes for a node group. In other words, undid and removed nodes have the same spec in a uh, node group. However, uh, if uh, DDS uh, scales the device, the nodes in the node group have different specs. In this figure, uh, look at node group number two. In this case, uh, when she determines to add a node, uh, but she does not know what spec the node should be added in node group number two, uh, she cannot make such decision. So uh, this is a current problem. I ex explained the solution to the problem mentioned on the previous page. Specifically, uh, we will provide node group for vertical scaling. I explained the basic concept of the node group for vertical scaling. The most important thing is to show the maximum number of GPUs that can be attached to a node, to CA, as a node spec. The, uh, this table shows the differences between a normal node group and a node group for vertical scaling. At first, I explain about normal node group. 
when uh, CA is uh, considering node scaling, CA of team is the current node spec, such as the number of GPUs node has. For a normal node group, CA randomly picks a node from the node group and checks its specs. And then she simulates whether an unscheduled pot can be deployed by adding a node with the same specs. Therefore, the node specs she obtains are the actual node specs, and she assumes that all nodes uh, within the node group have the same specs. This is a current design of CA about normal node group. And next, I explain node group for DDS. In this case, she always obtains fixed spec. This means that the actual node specs are irrelevant to CA processing. Specifically, the spec that she obtains is the maximum number of GPUs that can be attached to the node. The reason for showing the maximum number is, to, is 200 cases where a user requests more GPUs than a node actually has. With uh, uh, current CA, if a number of GPUs greater than the actual number the node has, she cannot do anything because a thing node does not allow the port to be deployed. So in our solution, by showing the maximum number of GPUs that can be attached, she can determine that the port is deployable by adding nodes. So this does not matter if the nodes in the node group for DDS have different specs. And uh, I explain how to get a node spec. For node groups for DDS, we store the fixed spec of nodes, such as the maximum number of GPUs, in uh, machine set resource. When she obtains specs for node group for DDS, it always obtains the maximum number of GPUs listed in the machine set. This diagram shows the actual resource relationships. The node group is linked to the machine set resource, and the machine set resource manages the collection of machines. For example, uh, it has a parameter called replicas that indicates the number of nodes in the group. And uh, there is machine resources and uh, machine set resource. Machine resource is uh, representing a uh, uh, node battery. And uh, node resource is corresponding, corresponding to the node in Kubernetes cluster. This node resource has actual specs of the node. So uh, for normal node groups, she obtains the actual node spec from the node resource. On the other hand, for node groups for DDS, she obtains the maximum number of GPUs from the machine set resource. To achieve the functionality described on the previous page, we are proposing adding a new option to CA. Currently, we are under discussion in SIG auto scaling community in Kubernetes. Current CA has the ability to obtain the specs listed in the machine set uh, already. However, uh, CA currently only refers the spec in the machine set if there are no nodes in the node group. So if there is no node in node group, CA tries to obtain node specs from node resources, not machine set. The reason of this design, CA intends to increase the number of nodes from zero. So if, if a node does not exist in the node group, the node resource does not exist, therefore she need to refer machine set resource. For this design, uh, we are proposing to add an option to CA, uh, spec fixed. To reference the specs in the machine set, even if the node exists in node group. If this option is enabled, the CA can always refer the specs in the machine set. Uh, Take a look at the figure. The above diagram shows the current CA process. If a node exists in a node group, she refers to the actual specifications of the node resource. On the other hand, in the figure below, the CA refers to the specs in machine set, even if there are nodes in the node group, because the specs fixed option is enabled. This is a proposing feature to the Shigoto Senior community. Next, I explain about DDS feature, dynamic device scaling. Dynamic device scaling, DDS, 
keeps the existing C concept. Therefore, uh, DDS hooks C processing such as node increase, and then DDS determines whether only GPU should be added or node should be added. So functional scope related to DDS is in red block. And this slide shows uh, how to hook uh, CA processing. When CA makes node add or remove decision, DDS intervenes to determine whether to add or remove GPS or nodes. And uh, DDS uh, hooks the following four cases. Case one is uh, when CA decides to add node, and then DDS determines whether adding only GPU or adding a node. And case two, when she wants to add a node, but cannot for some reasons. In this case, DDS determines if it can add only GPU. And case three, when she decides that the node is not needed. In this case, DDS determines whether deleting only GPU or node. And case four, when she wants to delete the node but cannot for some reasons, in this case, this determines whether it can delete only GPU. So for example, I explain additional case in this diagram. This is a case where uh, if a pot cannot be deployed due to lack of resources such as GPU, in this case, uh, this pot is deemed as uh, unscheduled pot and uh, CA detects uh, this unscheduled port. And if she determines to add nodes, in, uh, in this case, uh, she increases the number of replicas in the machine set resource. And in, in the uh, normal processing in CA, <coughs> the nodes are then actually added in the, in the uh, normal processing of CA. However, uh, DDS hooks up this process and determine whether to add nodes or only GPUs. The next slide shows how to do this. This page shows how to fix the processing about node increase case, for example. She increases the number of replicas in machine set when adding nodes. DDS monitors the increase in the number of replicas and goes into the process of determining whether to add a GPU or node. Uh, the diagram on the left shows the current C processing. At first, uh, she increments the replica count uh, to add a node. In this case, the number of replicas is changed from uh, 2 to 3. And then the infrastructure provider responsible for provisioning the nodes is uh, monitoring the number of replicas. If the number of replicas increases, the infrastructure provider actually uh, creates servers. The figure on the right shows how DDS handles hooks. In this time, I explain what happens when DDS determines to add only GPUs. At first, uh, she increments the replica count, in this case from uh, 2 to 3, and then DDS monitoring the number of replicas. When the number of replicas increases, uh, DDS determines whether to add GPUs or nodes. And if only GPUs should be added, DDS uh, will change the replica count back to the original count and request additional GPUs. In this case, from uh, 3 to 2. And so, uh, regarding infrastructure provider, uh, because the inf infrastructure provider refers to a parameter called CDN nodes, not the brick account, actual node addition is not occurred. So uh, this is the difference uh, between uh, current CA process flow and DDS processing flow. So uh, this also requires modification on the part of the infrastructure provider. And uh, let's take a quick look at how DDS decides whether to add GPUs or nodes. Actually, uh, there, there are a lot, of, lot more to consider, but I will only explain the most basic logic here. In a nutshell, DDS virtually uh, adds, no, adds GPU to a node one at a time. 
it then uh, simulates whether the unscheduled port becomes deployable. And uh, if the bot can be deployed by uh, adding GPU, DDS requests only GPU. On the other hand, if a port cannot be deployed, even if adding the maximum number of GPUs to all nodes, in this case, DDS will request additional nodes. So this is a uh, simple logic. And uh, these uh, linked to features are currently under discussion with the uh, community. We have only just started discussions with the community, SIG uh, auto scaling. So uh, we will continue discussions to standardize uh, this feature from now. And if you are interested, uh, please leave your feedback at the link above. Next, I explain SIDA operator feature. SIDA operator sends a request to SIDA manager to attach or detach GPUs from resource pool. And SIDA operator has a custom resource. DDS can change the configuration of devices in a node through the custom resource. Therefore, a uh, functional scope related to SIDA operator is in red block. Custom resource, uh, SIDA operator, and uh, uh, SIDA manager. The, uh, uh, this diagram uh, shows uh, processing flow. At first, uh, DDS creates or updates or modifies uh, custom resources for the SIDA operator. And this custom resource is called uh, composability request. If the composability request changes, the SIDA operator will detect this. Then SIDA operator determines how many GPUs should be increased or decreased on which nodes. And SIDA the operator then sends a specific configuration change request to SIDA manager. SIDA the operator uh, manages the node device according to the desired setting of the composability request. Therefore, uh, it is possible to automatically replace a GPU that has a hardware failure was for some reason. This is because there is a difference between the desired setting and the actual state. Therefore, SIDA the operator has more logic and functions uh, but I will not explain them here. And next, uh, this is a composability request data format. We can specify which GPU model and how many are connected to which node. Composability request has the uh, following parameters. At first, uh, type parameter. This parameter means uh, device type such as GPU. And uh, currently, only GPU is supported in SIDA operator, but uh, we are going to support CX memory and other device type in the future. The uh, second parameter is size. This means the uh, number of devices uh, we want to attach. And model parameter means model name of devices, and this is optional parameter. And the Tiny node parameter means uh, the node to which uh, you want to attach the device. And this is also uh, optional parameters. And the next option, uh, force detach. <coughs> this is the option to force detach even if GPU is used and uh, default is disabled. This option is uh, for system administrator if system administrator wants to remove the GPU, but user rejects that request and the user continues to use the GPU, in this case, system administrator enables this option so that the GPU can be removed forcefully. And the last parameter is uh, connection policy. Connection policy uh, is for a GPU when no target node is specified. And there are uh, two policies. The first one is same node. Same node means uh, SIDA operator tries to connect all devices to the same node as much as possible. And the second policy is round robin. This option means uh, SIDA operator tries to connect GPUs evenly to each node. And uh, if we use DDS, uh, DDS automatically updates the uh, discomposability request data format. And alternatively, uh, if DDS is not used, in this case, user can manually update the composability request to change the configuration of the uh, node devices. 
And this is a link to features currently under discussion with the community. We are discussing and developing with IBM Research because they developed the base functionality and are now working together to improve it. So if you are interested, please give your feedback to the link above. And next, we will show our demo. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Lei. I would like to present our demo. Uh, in the demo, I will show two patterns. <clears throat> first, uh, first one is adding GPU automatically, and the other one is adding, is adding node automatically. This is the detailed information about the demo. Uh, I will do the demo on starting status. Uh, in, on starting status, we have two worker nodes in our cluster, and each node have, has one GPU. The GPU is being used by pod. At this moment, I create a pod which using GPU because there is no GPU available, so the node is pending. And then DDS, DDS, uh, I, I, and then DDS add GPU automatically. Finally, so the, the pod is running. After that, I create another pod which requires a lot of memory because there is no memory, because there is no enough memory, the, the port is pending. <clears throat> so the DDS uh, can uh, add node automatically. Finally, the port is running. And so sorry for the font, it's too small. Uh, before I start the demo, Before I start the demo, I would like to introduce the layout of my screen. The top left is the operation, the operation window, and the top right is used to monitor GPUs, nodes, and ports. As you know, on starting status, we have two worker nodes in our cluster, and each node has one GPU. The GPU is, used, is being used by port, and the middle right is CDI operator log. The bottom right is DDS log. Now let's start. First of all, I, I would like to do the demo of adding GPU automatically. I, <clears throat> I'm going to create, sorry. I'm going to create a pod using GPU. So you can see there is a, the, the pod is pending because there is no GPU available. So we are waiting for DDS detect the pending pod and send uh, and add, add GPU by, re, by sending request to CDI operator. So please pay attention to CDI operator log. It will take tens of minutes, uh, tens of seconds. So you can see CDI operator received a, a request to add GPU. The model is A30 and the size is one. The target node is worker QEPS3. Now the CD operator is, uh, is attaching GPU to target node. You can see the GPU has been already added and the port is running. So the second, uh, I would like to do the demo of, of adding node automatically. Uh, I would like to uh, create a several pods that use a lot of memory to, um, 
that use a lot of memory to achieve the effect of making node insuffi in insufficient. So I create first port, and it's running. We create the second port, and it's running. We create a third port, and it's also running. And I create the first port, and you can see the first port is pending. The reason is insufficient memory. So the DDS will detect the pending node and add a node to the cluster. To the cluster. Since um, scaling out the node will take tens of minutes, I will Fast, fast forward to the new node has been created has been created. We, uh, we, we confirmed the uh, third work uh, is that it in your uh, environment, uh, but uh, this is. Uh, this has been not, not recorded, maybe. Sorry. But, uh, we, we confirmed uh, uh, node, node addition uh, in our environment yes. by uh, DDS and Shida Pereira. Sorry for uh, excuse me. And uh, finally, I explain our future outlook regarding CA. We need to discuss the detailed com specification for our node group for uh, vertical steering in uh, Shigoto steering community. And uh, regarding DDS and SHID operator, we need to do uh, standardization in parallel with development in the community. And it's uh, currently uh, we uh, focus on GPU, but uh, we will expand to other device types uh, such as CX memory. And we also need to realize hot plug of devices for vertical steering. And uh, there are several features to use GPU in Kubernetes environment, uh, such as uh, dynamic resource allocation, DRA, and uh, GPU operator. These features need to support hot plug for uh, the vertical steering. So today, I, I don't explain these features, uh, but uh, we are working on hot plug support for these features. And that's it. So thank you for listening. Uh, any questions? Uh, hello, uh, thanks for the presentation here, very good stuff. I have a question about uh, when you add multiple GPUs to a node there. So because it's using PCIe cable and something like that, so what would be the PCIe topology looks like? Or see NVIDIA at MI topo output there? Do you want to know the topology? Yeah, PCI topology, uh, or the multiple GPU okay. and the CPU. Yeah, GPUs are uh, connected to uh, PCI, PCI box, and PCI box is connected to PCI switch. 
and so uh, topology is uh, controlled by uh, PCI switch and the CD manager uh, controls the PCI switch. So uh, in the compressed layer, uh, we, we cannot uh, actual physical topology. Uh, in compressed layer, uh, we, we cannot know the actual PCI topology, but uh, PCI switch is managed the topology and uh, CD manager control this topology. Okay, so there's like no NUMA affinity there uh, for, for the Kubernetes? Currently, the PCI switch is, uh, does, does not recognize the NUMA node topology. So I, I think we need to uh, label to the node and the, we are manually, uh, yeah, manually to do this, I, I think. Okay, I see. So another question, you just mentioned that the CDI operator is uh -huh. running in the computer server, CPU server there, or is running in the PCI switch inside the... Uh, no, uh, she operator is running on the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So the uh, uh, cluster administrator can manually, uh, oh, cluster administrator can manually uh, change the shared operator manifest. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Okay, thank you for the presentation. So maybe it's a simple question, like can this CDI operator uh -huh. scale the GPU down to zero? I'm sorry, I, I, I just hear. I mean, can this CDI operator scale down the GPU at attached to the port right to the zero? I mean, removing GPU, is that possible? Uh, so maybe I, I can't understand your question. Uh, CDI operator can do the attach GPU to the node or detach GPU to the node uh, I mean, is it like can can we scale down the number of GPU to zero, right? Or is to zero? Zero, zero. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it, okay. It is supported. Ah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.